From architect to priest, we're taking a trip back to the 1800s. And tonight's Throwback Thursday, historical commissioner Jean Fernandez has more on the masterminds behind some of our Catholic churches. Brenda, we have covered many different characters in this series of Throwback Thursday. We've gone all the way from giants to gangsters. We're going to cover the beautiful story of Father Pierre Corallum. Father Corallum was born in Bretagne, France in about 1820. He was accepted into the priesthood about 1850, but prior to that, he was an architect and a very, very skilled one. He was a builder architect. He was assigned to South Texas, and he arrived here in about 1852. His first mission was to go to Roma and work with the parish there. He helped design that particular church. Now, we're on the subject of architecture because that was his forte. Father Corallum actually built that particular church there in Roma. Going off into the period of about 1856, the father that, who was in charge of the initial laying of the foundation of this church where we are now, which is the Immaculate Conception Cathedral, and that was Jean-Marie Verdet. Well, he ended his life tragically because he left Brownsville in 1856 in order to go to New Orleans to pick up some money for the build, finishing of the church. Well, that particular ship sunk and Father Verdet drowned. That's when Father Corallum was brought back to Brownsville to help finish the church. And the architecture that we see here is basically Gothic revival. It is an excellent example of that in the entire state of Texas for certain. He not only finished this particular church in 1859, took six years to build this church, he also lent his skills to the building of the rectory, to the Brothers College, and he started the first convent that blew down in 1867, and then he also lent his hand into the convent that was built in 1867. There are two other churches that are important in Father Corallum's architectural gift to this South Texas, and they were actually built after his death. They were drawn on plans that he had developed prior to his death, and they are the church there at Santa Maria, the Nuestra Señora de Visitación, and also the church at the Tuluca Ranch, St. Joseph the Worker. All of these buildings are splendid examples of his genius, and they are basically Gothic in style. Beyond the fact that Father Corallum was a genius in architecture, he was more so a genius in his service to the community and to the parish. He was called by the parishioners El Padrecito Pedrito, and he made the circuit at least three times a year, sometimes four times a year, to the various ranchitos that were all the way from Brownsville up to Roma by horseback, if you can imagine. That was the Cavalry of Christ, and he was among the very, very first members of that missionary crew that went up the river. What I have before me is a copy of the roster from the church of the 120 ranchitos that the Cavalry of Christ served. What a formidable task it was to go through each one of these. Well, they didn't go through all 120 at one time, but they hit the majority of them on their route. In 1872, he had lent his services to the design of St. Augustine Church in Laredo, but in the fall of that year, he made a mission on his route up the valley against the will of the other priests in the diocese because of his failing health. Well, he serviced a mission outside of Mercedes in 1872. It was November of 1872. And then he didn't appear at the next station. So people began to worry and whatever, and of course they suspected foul play. Well, Father Corallum did indeed succumb on that particular fateful mission in November of 1872. His his remains and his little camp that was set up with the altar and all of the fixings for his missionary service was not found until 10 years later. Those particular artifacts are now in the possession of the church, and there is a movement to actually take Father, dear Father Corallum into the sainthood. He was a reverend spirit. He gave so very, very much to the community that he served and he lent so much to the architectural aspect of what the church 
appeared as? With all of that gift, that built upon his legend, and the rest is history. For KVEO News, I'm Eugene Fernandez.